How far can electric cars really travel on a full charge? Back in the summer, we took 10 fully charged EVs and drove them until they died. Now it's winter and we're gonna do the same test to see what impact the temperature change has on those results. To do this, we've got five of the same cars as last summer. The Porsche Taycan, Ford Mustang Mach-E, Skoda Enyaq, Fiat 500, and the Tesla Model 3. And we've also got five new contenders, the Audi Q4 e-tron, BMW iX3, Kia EV6, the MG5 and the Tesla Model Y. To do the test, we followed the same procedure as our summer test. So that means we carried out the comparison at our private test track in Bedfordshire. We drove exactly the same loop as last time with 2.6 miles of simulated stop-start urban driving, four miles at a steady 50 miles an hour and eight miles at a constant 70 miles an hour. The cars were fully charged, then unplugged and left out in the open overnight for roughly 15 hours in three to six degrees Celsius ambient conditions. The following morning, all 10 were plugged in again to check they had full batteries. The climate control was set to 21 degrees and the headlights switched on. Normal or the closest equivalent driving mode was selected and the cars were left in their default regenerative braking setting. That's with the exception of the Taycan because it defaults to the off setting. We set it to auto. Preconditioning, where an EV's interior is warmed up while it charges, wasn't allowed. The 10 cars were then driven round our test route in convoy with driver changes and a switch in running order at the end of each lap. And by the way, the footage you're watching now isn't representative of how we actually drove for the test itself. For that, all the driving was smooth and sensible with no sudden bursts of acceleration and a good amount of distance between each car. The minimum temperature during testing was three degrees, rising to a peak of seven degrees in the early afternoon. It was a relatively windy day, but there was no rain. If you're interested in more on the results of our summer test, click on the link at the top of the screen there. And why not subscribe to our channel while you're at it and go to whatcar.com for a great deal on your next car. For now, let's go through the results of our winter test. And the first car to die was the one with the smallest battery. The Fiat 500 grinding to a halt first was hardly a shock. Disappointingly though, it was a long way adrift of its official range. The Italian city car managed just 118 miles on a full charge, a whopping 40% short of the official figure. Although its efficiency worked out at 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour, which wasn't bad compared to the others on test. Next to drop out was the MG5 at 167 miles, averaging 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. After that, the Enyaq clocked 174 miles before expiring. This is the smaller battery 60 version of the Enyaq. You can get one with a bigger battery, and if you do, it's the same battery that was in the closely related Audi Q4 e-tron, which just ticked over 200 miles before dying at 201 miles. It was, though, the least efficient car in the test, averaging just 2.6 miles for every kilowatt hour of energy. On the plus side, it still achieved a range that many potential buyers will consider perfectly usable. Now, some cars here have heat pumps. In the Model 3 and the Model Y, you get that as standard. And in some of the other cars here, like the Enyaq, it's an optional extra. Now, if you do have a heat pump, it basically means that to heat the interior of your car requires less energy from the battery than if it didn't have a heat pump. So in these cold conditions, when you do want to warm up the interior, it requires less energy to do so and therefore should give you a better range than if the car didn't have a heat pump. If you want a bit more detail on that, the traditional way of warming up the interior of an electric car is by using a resistance heater that feeds off the drive battery. In essence, we're talking about the sort of rudimentary fan heater you might use in a greenhouse to keep the frost off your tomatoes. However, newer EVs with heat pumps consume much less power than resistance heaters and essentially move warmth from one location to another in much the same way as a refrigerator does. In some EVs, the heat pump can either warm up the battery or cool it down. And when it cools it, excess heat can be sent to the interior. The pump can also take heat from air around the car, compress it to increase its temperature and again use it to warm the interior. As luck would have it, half the cars in our test had heat pumps and half didn't. The cars we've already seen die in this test didn't have heat pumps fitted. On average, they fell 33.6% short of their official range. Likewise, the cars with heat pumps were more efficient, averaging 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour between them, compared with 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour for those without. 
We weren't able to test an identical model with and without a heat pump to find out the difference with no other variables. Nevertheless, if you plan to push the range of your EV in winter, we'd recommend choosing a car with a heat pump fitted or adding one as an option. So the first heat pump equipped EV to bite the dust in our winter test was the recently facelifted BMW iX3, which managed 212 miles. At 224 miles, the Taycan came the closest to matching its official range, but it still fell 21.8% short of it. It owes this big range to its massive battery because the car itself isn't particularly efficient. Then again, it's an incredibly capable performance car with fat, sticky tyres and acceleration that can embarrass even the Tesla Model 3, so that's hardly surprising. Just after the Taycan, the Kia EV6, which is our 2022 car of the year, managed 228 miles. And if you want to find out what makes it so good, click on the link at the top of the screen to watch our full review. The top three cars carried on for at least another 20 miles. The Tesla Model Y was next to go at 247 miles, and so finishes third in this test, averaging a very respectable 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. The Mustang Mach-E just finished ahead of it, only by about 300 meters, but it was far less efficient than the Model Y and much further from its official claimed range. There was one contender that stood head and shoulders above the others though, and that was the Tesla Model 3. It not only kept going for the longest, managing a seriously impressive 281 miles, but was also by far the most efficient, averaging 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. It was, comfortably, our winner in these cold conditions. Cold temperatures don't just affect the range of an electric car, but also the charging speed too. So the ideal temperature for an electric car battery is around 20 to 25 degrees. That means that a cold battery in cold weather will take longer to charge than a warm battery in warm weather. One way around this, and a function that more EVs are offering now, is something that lets you precondition your battery on the way to a charging station. So for example, you can get in your car, and as you drive to the charging station, the car will warm the battery up to try and get it in that ideal temperature so that when you arrive at the charging station, you can try and get the maximum charging speed available. So what then do our results of the winter test show us compared to our summer test? How much of an effect does cold weather have on an EV's range? To answer that question, we need to focus on four of our contenders, the Fiat 500, Ford Mustang Mach-E, Porsche Taycan, and Skoda Enyaq IV. We tested them all last summer in identical forms, right down to details like the size of their alloys. On average, the four cars fell 17% short of the distance they achieved back in July. The closest was the 500, which ran out of juice 21 miles sooner than it did when it was warm. The Taycan suffered a dead battery 56 miles earlier than it did in the summer. So based on our tests in the UK, you can expect around 15 to 20% fewer miles from an EV in winter than in summer. And of course, an even bigger drop in range is inevitable in snowy and icy conditions or in colder climates still. The Tesla Model 3, by the way, also made an appearance in our summer range test, but since then, the car has had a mild update, with the US brand increasing the density of its battery. The Model 3 used in the winter test was one of these new updated cars. On top of that, this time our test car was fitted with its standard 18-inch aero wheels, while the previous test car was fitted with optional 19-inch wheels. This makes an exact comparison impossible. So that is what you can expect from these electric cars in real world driving conditions in winter here in the UK. Are you surprised by the results? Does this put you off going for an electric car? Tell us in the comments below. And before you go, give this video a like if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel if you want to see lots more new car reviews and buying advice.